let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast, Coach Calling here. Tucker Carlson did not agree with this gentleman's political stance whatsoever. It was someone that he interviewed, a black nationalist socialist. So he sits down with Joe and he's talking about how even if you don't agree with somebody, you should still defend their right to have free speech. And that's exactly what he did when he interviewed this person. This person didn't do anything wrong, but they did get raided by the FBI. And it was wild the way that they did it. It was 40 agents. It was it was firearms. It was flash bombs. It was everything. It was crazy. The gentleman is 83 years old. And what they said wasn't a lie. It fell under the term of malinformation, something that's true that could still affect the system at large, could still be seen as something that could be damaging. That's what malinformation is. So this gentleman didn't lie. He told the truth, but they still didn't like it. So Tucker decided to sit down with that gentleman and interview him. They're going to go over it a little bit. Joe and Tucker, and then I'm actually going to play some parts from the Tucker interview because I think one clip that I found in that interview might be exactly why this gentleman got attacked the way that he did. Let's get into it. Don't forget about the new channel that I got. It's Coach Colin Media. Hit that subscribe button. We're going for 3,000 subscribers on that channel. We got 2,000 right now. We got 47 videos up. So hit that subscribe button if you want to hear me break away from the Rogan content. But other than that, let's get into this. Then go ahead and defend it. And if somebody is not allowed to speak or fired from his job for having an opinion that you disagree with, defend him anyway. I, I just interviewed a guy who is a black nationalist socialist, okay? So I'm obviously not much of a black nationalist. I, I don't know if you're aware of that, but I'm not. And I'm not a socialist either, but this guy is facing prison time under the Biden DOJ because he said things they don't like about foreign policy. And I just interviewed the guy for an hour and it was like, I'm because on principle, you should be able to say what you think. Period. What, what is this gentleman's name? I, I, he was actually, a, <laughs> it turns out I like loved him. Um, oh, and I'm embarrassed. I can't, he's, he's a member of a pretty small black nationalist socialist group. It's like the revolutionary black nationalists or something like that. They're uh -huh. out of, uh, out of Southwest Florida. And um, he's literally facing prison for repeating Russian disinformation. He's not even accused of doing anything. He's accused of saying things the Biden DOJ doesn't like. Well, in a what were these things that he said? Repeating Russian propaganda about about the invasion of Ukraine. And his point was, well, there's a backstory here, which is that NATO has been moving eastward since 1991. And that's a massive threat to Russia. Missiles on their border from a hostile power is a threat. And the Biden administration accelerated that. And in response, Putin invaded Eastern Ukraine. Now, you can disagree with that, but that's hardly a crackpot view, by the way. I think that's actually true. But even if you don't agree that it's true, that's not, you don't have to be a paid propagandist from the Kremlin to say that. Right. I have said it. I'm not a paid propagandist. Is this a gentleman? Kremlin. That's him right there. Four Americans from a Amalia black empowerment organization work with Russian you intelligence to spread propaganda. Fed yes. Say. To spread propaganda. Now, propaganda, first of all, you know, there's a, a lot of propaganda. But Scroll up a little on that, Jamie, so I can read what this is saying. It's covered up. Oh, okay. Right. So that says, guy yeah, is that yeah, guy right there. OK, subscribe real quick. Yeah. The People's Democratic Uhuru Movement in St. Petersburg. So. So he contacted. He spoke with someone in Russia. They spoke with people in Russia. And then he's he not. No, no, no. He is being um, he's charged with felonies. The FBI raided his house. The first thing they did was cover up the security cameras and they went in there and arrested him, raided by the FBI. Okay, Russia's so, Foreign Intelligence Service allegedly weaponized our First Amendment rights, freedoms, Russia died so citizens to divide Americans and interfere elections in the U.S. His Assistant Attorney General Matthew Olson. Now, first of all, weaponized our First Amendment rights? No. Your First, your first Amendment rights are never a crime. Right. They're God-given. The government did not bestow them. You were born with them as a free person, period. And the First Amendment simply says you can't interfere with their exercise. That's it. And in this, they are. And, and I looked at, I read this and I thought, and I reach out to this guy, by the way. Matthew Olson? No, I wish. Matthew Olson would never do my show. I mean, the guy whose salary I pay as a U.S. citizen, no, he would <laughs> never speak to L me. Listen, look at that, that quote. Russia's foreign intelligence services alleg allegedly weaponized our First Amendment rights, freedoms Russia denies its own citizens to divide Americans and interfere in elections in the United States. That, you gotta, like... Why are you saying that? Let's say what happened. Well, but Don't nothing. Say, but nothing happened. So that's right. the thing. So I'm reading this. Someone sent it to me, and I'm like, okay, clearly there's a crime here. Like they were found with, 
I don't know, mortar shells or they were, I mean, usually right. the government makes up, they put kitty, kitty porn on your computer at least right. to discredit you. There's no underlying crime other than they said something that the foreign policy establishment of the United States disagrees with. Okay, that's not a crime by definition. And this guy is facing life in prison. And it looks to me, because no because Barry Weiss has not defended him, um, I think this guy is likely to spend the rest of his life in prison. And I'm like, this is crazy. The rest of his life in prison? Yes. Okay, hold it. This is he's, the thing. He's, I think he's 83. Yeshita, how do you say his name? Yeshitella? Yeshitella and three other U.S. citizens, Penny Joanne Hess, Jesse Nevelle, and Augustus C. Romaine Jr. are charged with conspiracy to defraud U.S. Hess. Uh, oh, okay. The fraud of the United States. Uh, Hess, Yeshitella, and Nevelle are also charged with impersonating agents of a foreign government. Okay, they say to defraud the United States. So defraud suggests theft of something of value, right? right? right. If I defraud you, I steal your money. There's no allegation of that at all. And I actually read the charges. There's no, the only allegation is they said things that the U.S. government, the Biden administration doesn't like. That's it. And because they're unpopular and they have views that are considered, quote, quote fringe, you know, like crazy black nationalists, nobody wants to defend them. And my only point is not that I'm like such a principled person. This also this seems very obvious to me. You can't allow that. You absolutely cannot allow that if you believe in the First Amendment and the freedom of free people to say what they think. So the, with this app, this implication is they're saying that they, they were recruited um, by the FSB. So it says, uh, prosecutor said Ionov uh, operated an entity called the Anti-Globalization Movement of Russia that was used to carry out its U.S. influence efforts overseen by the Russian intelligence service known as FSB. Okay, so they recruited U.S.-based organizations to help sway elections, make it appear there was a strong support in the U.S. for Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and backed efforts such as the 2015 United Nations petition to decry the genocide of African people in the U.S. according to the indictment. <laughs> back that, efforts what does that what mean do, uh, look at that like this it means negative that. To back efforts to de uh, such as the 2015 united nations petition to decry the genocide of african people but what just look at that statement backed efforts such as a thing to decry genocide the united nations petition of 2015 to decry the genocide of african people in the U.S., according to the indictment. Okay, so the real misinformation and propaganda is in the charging documents, actually. The real liars here are the Biden DOJ officials who did this, and they're dangerous. They're criminals, in my opinion. But if you read it carefully, you will see that the only crime is having opinions that the people in charge didn't like. And were they in contact with people from Russia? Yeah, I think they went over to Russia for some conference. So, so they went but, over to by Russia the way, but the way this typically works is they say, well, you went to a country against which we've imposed sanctions, right? And you violated the sanctions regime in some way. Like that's how they get you. They're not even alleging that. They're not even alleging that. They're just saying you said things that we don't like. That by the way, a foreign government we don't like agrees with. But, but that's that not, they learned those when they went over to Russia. Well, it's they all on, no, it's things? all on the internet. They're but did they people, learned them. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter where they learned them. I would because I've talked to the guy and I've seen what they wrote, the opinions that they expressed, I don't, you know, the genocide of African peoples in America, I don't even know what that means. Um, I guess I don't agree with that. But their views on Russia, I generally agree with because I think they're true. And so does Jeff Sachs and a lot of other non-crazy, non-black nationalists who probably agree with the basic framework of their position. But whether we agree or not is not relevant. Right. All that matters is in a free country, which this was when I grew up, you have the right to any opinion you want. You do not have the right to hurt people. You don't have the right to steal from them. You don't have the right to defraud people. But you certainly, foremost, have the right to any opinion you want, no matter what the people in charge think of it. In fact, you have that right as a bulwark against tyranny by the people in charge. Like, that's the only thing that keeps this country free is my right to have any opinion I want. And this guy is going to jail for his opinions. And, you know, I, I, it's so crazy that I kept thinking, like, is there something that I'm missing? Like... It does seem a little fringe, this group. I'd never heard of them. I'm not saying the money, okay? Um, they must have done something. Nope, nothing. And you should see the video of the FBI raid. It's unbelievable. They sent, they sent like, it's on the internet. It's on X. I have the video on there. They sent like 40 armed agents with automatic weapons to this guy's office and his house. Like, no exaggeration. It was a full-blown, like, we're arresting El Chapo type thing. For this guy, he's like an 83-year-old army veteran. It's outrageous. And I really find it baffling that nobody who's like against woke culture or whatever will touch it. And the reason they won't touch it is because their foreign policy views in general are more important to them than their views on speech and the First Amendment, their views on America. Well, if you step out of line, right? So the ideology is that we must support Ukraine. 
Right. So this is the, Russia has a point. This is what they're saying. So Russia was very upset about the movement of the weapons closer to their borders, yeah. the, the the joining NATO, all, all the stuff that was the hard red lines that Putin had already set. Like if Russia, Russia would definitely do something if Ukraine joined NATO. We all knew that. So if you deviate from that, you're going to be in trouble. So better just ignore it. Because you can That's, that is what makes sense, right? That's what you're hearing. But as you listen to the interview between Tucker and this gentleman, some other things stand out. Because here's the thing. The whole Russia has a point and the hard red lines. Tucker has said this. Joe has said this. Tim Pool has said this. Uh, countless Charlie Kirk, like countless people have said Patrick Bet David countless people I think Candace Owens even so many people have said this exact same thing and they didn't get rated nothing happened to them I think there's something different going on with this guy I think the fact that he's standing up to the power structure and that he has opinions like this as well. Let me play this clip for you guys real quick. Check this out. So, t tell us... Oh, actually, let me bring it back. Sorry. Right here, I think. Yeah, perfect. Let's play this. Now, from the Republican Party. From and I'm not a Trump uh, person or a Republican person. I'm... I'm for the liberation of black people. And that's why this whole thing about working for Russians is so ridiculous. I'm not looking for another master. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get rid of the whole relationship that presupposes uh, that we will be servants uh, service of anybody. I mean, given that you haven't actually done anything, you're not accused of doing anything that isn't already legal, exercising rights that are guaranteed to you from birth till death under the U.S. Constitution. I'm a little bit surprised that nobody has defended you in the U.S. media. Now, I will say your name sounds non-mainstream of your organization, but once you so learn- like Obama. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Fair, fair, <laughs> Barack Hussein Obama. But once- but once you learn the details of this, you'd think there would be at least one civil libertarian at the New York Times editorial page or the Washington Post or NBC News or CNN or any of these groups. Has anybody said a word about an armored personnel carrier showing up at your house for for speaking, for talking? No, we've had to go out and really uh, work. I mean, in July of uh, uh, this year, we had uh, a meeting, a conference, and we pulled together something like 40 different organizations and what have you to unite uh, as a part of a free speech, uh, uh, anti-colonial free speech movement who are pushing back on this. And I think that includes uh, uh, one uh, organization of lawyers and what have you. But generally speaking, we haven't been able to get anything, even so-called progressive black politicians and what have you have not stepped forward. But you also got to remember, we're talking about a period uh, where it's impermissible even to say things. Well, you can say from sea to shining sea. You cannot say from, uh, from uh, uh, how's it go, from, from the river, to, is it from the river to, river to the sea? You know, you know I mean, it's, it's incredible, uh, the, uh, the attack that's being made on the right to people to speak. And by the way, uh, as a point of information, I've been arrested several times on the question of speech. I was arrested in Florida. Uh, 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 they created a law uh, uh, called incitement to riot. Didn't have to be a riot. I just had to want one to happen when I spoke. I mean, they put me in jail and threatened to put me in prison for having done that. So this question of, of speech is a really critical issue and people need to pay attention. I was under assault in, in St. Petersburg, Florida in 1996. Uh, some 300 uh, uh, cops, uh, National Guard uh, troops, uh, 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 attacked our building, uh, set houses on fire, uh, uh, used all kinds of machinations, including the FBI, uh, because they were concerned uh, that we were protesting and speaking out against the uh, police having killed uh, an 18-year-old youngster and, and uh, the grand jury uh, having said it was all right for that to occur. And we were having a meeting and they didn't want me to talk. And so they attacked the building. They said in our own building, they said that uh, 
that you have uh, uh, something like five minutes to get out of the building because this is an illegal meeting. And I own, we own the building. And so they attacked it. So the free speech question and that the problem is they did this in, in plain view. People saw it happen. Uh, they brought, I mean, uh, pe the people in the community actually brought a helicopter down by gunfire. This is how intense it was. And not a single civil libertarian stepped forward to say, why are you attacking these people for just speech? Well, but and, I'm, conf I'm confused. So you're describing basically what the Black Lives Matter people said four years ago. They got some of them got legit rich out of it. You don't seem like you've gotten rich. And they they got all this money from Apple, the biggest companies in the world. And of course, the media cheerled them. Well, how did you miss out on that? Well, because the thing is, like to say Black Lives Matter uh, is such an empty slogan. It's a whine rather than a demand. Uh, it's <laughs> empty. I mean, Joe, Joe, you know, Joe Biden says Black Lives Matter. I mean, you had the whole Democratic uh, uh, Party, you know, Congress and whatever, get out on one knee with Kenta Cloth from Ghana on the, over their shoulder saying Black Lives Matter because it doesn't mean anything. It's a it's a non-statement. But what we yeah. say is black people have to have power. So we want power over our own life. That's the question. And that's the basis for the difference in how they would treat Black Lives Matter and how they would treat us. And, and you're right. The Black Lives Matter slogan is almost a Zuckerberg manufactured slogan. Certainly, if it's not manufactured by Zuckerberg, it's certainly promoted uh, by Zuckerberg yeah. and, and all the white people who love us. <laughs> all the white people who love us. But... You know, I have another clip as well, but just hearing that, especially the last part as he starts talking about Black Lives Matter, it seems like he and his organization aren't going by the narratives that everyone is so used to seeing black people go for. The one thing that he said that really stood out, he goes, we want power. Here's the thing. Here's the difference between what he said and what Black Lives Matter does. Black Lives Matter was disempowering black people throughout the nation, disempowering minorities and even people in the LGBTQ uh, realm of things. They were disempowering those people. They were making those people feel like victims. They were making people like that live in their victimhood, celebrate their victimhood, celebrate weakness, all of these things. You have no power, you're weak, and because of that, we should rise up and, and have some peaceful protests that resulted in millions and millions of dollars in damage. The whole while, they were collecting money. When you have this small organization saying, we want power as black people, that is completely different. First of all, they're not, they're not going by the narrative. Second of all, they're looking, because you have to think, they're saying they want power. Who do they want power from? Do they want power from a light switch that's on the wall? or a plug or do they want power from a system that exists right now black lives matter was going along with the system it was actually aiding the system it was aiding the party it was aiding the it was aiding a lot but what he's talking about is actually quite destructive to the system or at least at the very least weakens it a little bit so when i see that when i hear that from this gentleman i'm like oh that's why they were coming after you you're talking, and then also on top of it, again, back to the narrative between this gentleman, which, you know, he's a socialist, and the the woke black people of today, he's like, I don't want a master. He's like, I don't want a master. Which means that, you know, if you're following the Black Lives Matter narrative, you have a master. Your master is the Democratic Party, and you're okay with that. You're very happy about that because those Republicans are all racist and oh, they don't like us and mega and this and that. So everything that he kind of stands for goes against the woke movement. That's why you hear he's like even the so-called black progressives didn't stand up for him. It's because nobody in the woke realm of things is going to stand up for this guy. Absolutely not. He pushes what he wants destroys what they're going after. And what they've achieved so far completely destroys it. And then uh, what else do I have there? Yeah, because he's anti-woke. No black politicians. Again, because he's pretty much anti-woke. And he's anti, he seems pretty anti, you know, not government, but 
the Democrats of today, he seems almost, even though he's a socialist, so he's like so far left, he seems almost like a a classic liberal, but you know, still a little far left because he's a socialist. So a liberal of today will look at someone like him and be like, I don't know what this is. You don't want a master. You don't like what I do. You don't like what they do. I, I can't even, I can't even put you in a proper box. And then he says, good, because I want power. And they're like, well, okay. So no one's going to come and defend this guy. He's not going with any narratives. He's saying whatever he wants. And on top of that, he could possibly inspire millions of people of color to start operating with that same mindset. And here's the thing. Here's what happens. And a lot of people don't realize this. As someone like that, a group like that, this, this black nationalist whatever group, they're going to find common ground with very unlikely people because they're after the same type of things. When you say you want power, say you want to be left alone, things like that, they're going to identify with white nationalists. Believe it or not, they're going to meet up with those people and be like, well, we just want power. Well, we just want we just want our country back and we just want things straightened out. Yeah, we want the same thing. OK, they're going to be able to negotiate. The way that Black Lives Matter and the woke movement has it all laid out, there's no negotiation to be made. There's no power for you to take because you have no power. And if they gave you any power, well, then you wouldn't identify with the woke movement. If black people gain power, any kind of power, the ones that identify with this whole thing, of course, there, there will be no need for them to be aligned with Black Lives Matter at all. Because they would just realize, well, I'm my own man and I don't really need this movement and I can just move along myself. So, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting to hear this guy talk. And again, I like what Tucker did because he doesn't agree. I don't agree with this guy. Like, I'm going through his website and it talks about reparations and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't identify with any of this. I think this is nonsense. Especially when I go to the website and it's talking about, um, where did it say it? We believe reparations for African and Afri Africa and African people just uh first of all africa participated in the slave trade so why would they get rap reparations from anywhere they they helped just uh compensation billions of dollars which must be paid to the organizations organization of african unity or any other legitimate international organization of african of africa african people black lives matter could fall under that what are you talking about you want to give them more money <laughs> so I don't agree with this guy and everything that he stands for, but definitely seeing what happened to him kind of makes sense. Again, he's not like Tucker, but he is like Tucker in the sense of he's pushing against the same narrative. Notice him and Tucker are worlds away, but what they thought about the Ukraine-Russia situation, they pretty much aligned perfectly. That's the problem that's the problem he's pushing against the narrative so hard and he's small if this happened to tucker carlson people would go oh my god i can't believe did you hear what happened to tucker carlson 40 agents this that this happens to this 83 year old guy i i never heard about it did you i've never heard about anything that he's gone through i've never i never saw that website until i decided to search it today because of tucker Here's another clip of them just talking about exactly what he did. And this is where they start talking about, they, they don't frame it properly. They're framing it as disinformation, but what they're actually explaining is the meaning of malinformation. ability of the regime, confident rulers don't act like this. Um, but I just, so I had to say that, but I just want to get to the facts of it quickly. So am I misreading this? I think your lawyer is right. Even if you are guilty of what they accuse you of doing, you're not guilty of any crime because you're not accused of violence, theft, no conventional crime. You're accused of having the wrong opinions. Am, am I missing something? Well, yeah, because what they've said is that uh, even if what we said was true, even if it's disinformation, we're accused of uh, spewing Russian disinformation. And they have said that even if we said what we said is true, uh, it, is, it still amounts to disinformation. So they're not necessarily accusing us of lying. Uh, they're accusing <laughs> us of talking. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's an extraordinary, it's an illegal 
document. Uh, when we've appealed this thing, uh, and we uh, immediately uh, went to court on this thing after nine months of being held uh, in a kind of legal purgatory, uh, where we were just uh, unindicted co-conspirators, which meant that we didn't have legal standing and we couldn't go to court and say, hey, uh, these people have just looted us and they have uh, uh, handcuffed us and they've, they've, they've shut down entire neighborhoods, uh, re refused to allow people to enter uh, uh, their homes. This is pre-dawn or leave without showing identification. Uh, they've done uh, all of uh, these things and uh, we can't go to court and, and complain about it because we have no legal standing because for nine months we weren't charged with anything. They've just stolen all of these materials. They've looted our files. They've taken laptops and iPads and iPhones and things like that. Uh, so it's nine months before they even indict us. They've, and before that, they offered a $10 million bounty uh, for any information uh, that uh, uh, on the man, uh, Alexander Ionov, who they said was the Russian for whom we were working, uh, and on anybody who could provide information on us, they offered a $10 million bounty. And this is even after they've stolen, looted everything they've got. They have no case because there is nothing there. Uh, it's a totally fabricated case that they've made against us, and it's extraordinarily dangerous because like what you said, first of all, uh, just, just to be historically factual, the Second Amendment was not something that was written for me or black people. I mean, it took, uh, the, the, the fact is that the law that governed most of the relationship for the longest period of time uh, was something that came out of 1857, Supreme Court ruling. Uh... So I let that run a little long because I wanted you to hear more of, you know, stuff that Tucker or I probably don't agree with. I don't know about Tucker. I, I don't agree with that. But same time what's happening to him or what has happened to him is absolutely crazy you know just you saw the footage there they were covering um they were covering cameras and it's it's pretty drastic why would they do all that because these guys said certain things there's russian disinformation but here's the thing tucker's been accused of that tulsi gabbard's been accused of that like this this happens but these people again are in the public eye if they did that to Tulsi, I mean, because Hillary Clinton at one point was like, she's a Russian asset. Wouldn't that be grounds to do something like that? But they can't just do that to a Tulsi Gabbard. You can't just do that to a Tucker Carlson, but you can do that to just a random person. If they're small enough, especially when they don't have any reach online. I mean, even I, their organization is probably much bigger than just me in this room and me asking my wife to Google things, but my reach is bigger than theirs. So I hope that protects me a little bit. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. But yeah, very, very, very interesting story that, again, you've probably never heard of. And again, uh, Tucker saying, that even if you don't agree with someone, you know, protect their right to freedom of speech anyway. You know, it, it kind of touches on something I talked about in another video. I think it was on the second channel. Check out the second channel. I'm pretty sure. I was talking about how what's going on with Trump is so crazy. And I was bringing up how if it happened with Obama or Biden or any presidential candidate, RFK, I would be like, this is crazy. If Trump was doing it to somebody, I'd be like, this is nuts. This can't be happening. So you do have to defend that kind of thing. Yeah, freedom of speech under attack, especially for this gentleman. And we still don't know if he's going to go to jail for the rest of his life. And the reason that they're saying a life sentence, he's not actually going to get life in prison, but he is 83. So how much longer does he really have? And also, I just like to say really quick, this is what people are talking about when they say there's a different in ages. They bring up Trump and Biden being close to the same age. This guy is pretty sharp for being 83 years old. He's he's getting his thoughts out. He's conducting an interview. He's going back and forth with Tucker Carlson. You know, that's that's what they're talking about. There's there's different types of 80 year olds, you know what I mean? And uh, we don't have the best kind right now at the top, if you know what I mean. Anyways, guys. Oh, I keep forgetting to mention we are uploading the library to Spotify, 
Apple. You can check it out there. It's there as well. Search for it. Soul not for sale. It's going to be on X as well. We're going everywhere just to cover our bases, you know, just in case. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, share. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm out.